Hi, everyone. So our last, last, last topic is putting it all together. So we have all these reactions we were doing uh, from alkenes, adding things onto it to make alcohols, and alkyl halides, halohydrins, dihalides, diols. Uh, and then we, in the last lesson, learned about reducing alkynes to alkenes to alkanes, or going directly. And then we also learned about oxidizing alcohols, primary and secondary, into carboxylic acids, aldehydes, and ketones. And then we also learned how to cleave the alkene, so to cut it into smaller pieces using oxidative cleavage with hot KMnO4 or ozonolysis. So now that we've got sort of um, a basic idea of how to go from this functional group to this one, to this one, we want to sort of link them together. So maybe think about one step, so I can go from an alkene to a carboxylic acid, let's say. Well, is there a way to go from an alkyne to a carboxylic acid? Well, I think you see you can go from an alkyne to an alkene, then go to the carboxylic acid. So we're starting to link things together. So let me show you some of the common linkages. And before we do that, let's write in a couple reactions that didn't make it on here. So first, um, I want to stick an E2 reaction in here. And so bringing back stuff from Chapter 7, we have a leaving group with the alkyl halide. The halogen is a good leaving group. So to get um, an E2 reaction, we form an alkene. We do that with either a small base, if we want a Zaitsev, um, we want a small strong base like sodium hydroxide or sodium methoxide or sodium ethoxide. Okay, and so that's going to give us the Zaitsev product and then that's with heat. Or we could do with a bulky base to get our Hoffman product, we'll use something bulky like potassium terbutoxide and heat. All right, so these reactions are E2. Okay, um, then we also learned how to do an E1 reaction with alcohols. So here are my alcohols, and I can turn the OHs into a good leaving group, but I need a reagent to do that. Do you guys remember? That was acid and heat. So, so to convert these into good leaving groups, I need to protonate the OH group using acid, usually concentrated sulfuric acid, or any kind of source of hydronium ion and heat. And so this is an E1 reaction here. Okay, so that helps us go both forward and back. So first thing is, I want you to be able to use this map, but also at some point, it's great if you can draw it out yourself. It will force you to really understand what each of these lines mean. So part of your assignment this quarter is to either create your own reaction map or to create a reaction tree. And if you remember, we've done lots of trees together, so we've done something like this. So, you know, some kind of concept map, something that's um, going to help you visually remember things. So reaction tree is fine if you want to do that. Or you can just write out a list of reactions. So, you know, this plus, you know, this, blah, 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 and then I make this. Okay, so, you know, you can just list them all out if you prefer. But I want you to turn in something showing me that you've been working out these reactions on your own. So again, you can either just list all the reactions we've learned, you can build a tree or multiple reaction trees, or you can create your own reaction map. And I've had lots of students be very creative with this if they want, and I've also had a lot of students just copy mine. But whatever you decide to do is fine, as long as you've been thinking about this on your own. So when we first start practicing with all of this, uh, I know it's overwhelming to think you would actually know this without just purely memorizing it, or it even seems daunting that you would memorize it. And I'm not really asking for you to just rotely memorize it. I want you to think back to mechanism and think back to Markovnikov, anti-Markovnikov. I want you to really piece it all together in a way that makes sense. 
And as you do with anything, you know, I want you to use this as much as you can so that you know it, okay? So don't just sit there and memorize this. Actually use it so much that you don't need it anymore. That's really the goal. So let's talk about how to use it, okay? So in each of these reactions, um, maybe with the exception of the first one, it all involves multiple steps. So this first reaction is just one step. It's making an alkene turn into a transdiol, okay? So an example of using your reaction map is this. So first I want you to recognize what we're doing. We're changing an alkene into a trans 1,2 diol. It helps to verbalize the functional groups. It's a functional group transformation. So let's find these functional groups on the map. So we're starting with an alkene and we're going to a diol. And we're going to a trans diol. So I'm going to use this pathway here. So MCPVA or any peroxy acid, and then step two, acid workup to open the ring. So this one actually is a multi-step reaction in the sense that it requires two steps, MCPBA and then acid to open the ring, the epoxide that forms from the first step. And of course the epoxide could form on the top or the bottom, so you get both in antumers. Now let's try the next one together, and I want you to see that even though it goes left to right, it doesn't go right to left here. So it goes, so even though this one goes left to right, you can see the reactive part is actually right here. So obviously that's changing into this, and so if you have a hard time seeing, I'm going to number this. This is carbon 1, 2, and 3. That means this is carbon 1. Carbon 1 two and three. So they, they flip the molecule on us and I just want you to be aware of that. Okay, that's just a cheap trick. Okay, but obviously three is not reactive, it's an alkane and alkanes are the least reactive of all the functional groups. So that just stays on the end. The part that's reactive is carbons one and two and in particular we see a preference for carbon one. A carbon one is anti-Markovnikov. So we want some kind of reaction that's anti-Markovnikov, but there is no reaction other than oxidative cleavage that, that goes straight to a carboxylic acid. And I know it's not oxidative cleavage because if I had cleavage, I would, if I had cleavage, oh, that sounds really bad. But, well, it's sort of true. If I had cleavage, <laughs> maybe I wouldn't be a chemistry teacher. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I had some beer earlier this evening, but okay. So here we got, got uh, oxidative cleavage. We would have only a two carbon unit and a one carbon unit, but actually they're intact. We have three carbon units. So we know it's not oxidative cleavage. Get that out of there. What I'm thinking instead is maybe we added something here that could then turn into a carboxylic acid. Okay, so I'm thinking about an addition reaction of something and then an oxidation reaction to my carboxylic acid. So let's sort of troll this reaction map and look for ideas. So I'm starting with an alkene and I'm not doing oxidative cleavage to get to my carboxylic acid. So I'm starting with my alkene and I'm not doing oxidative cleavage to get to my carboxylic acid. So the only other way to get here is to go through alcohols and then oxidize the alcohol. So what I need to do is then figure out which of these alcohols do I make and then which reagent do I use here. So obviously I'm going to use KMNO4 or Jones reagent once I get the alcohol. And then if you remember, we wanted the anti-Markovnikov. So I want to go this route. I want to use BH3THF followed by sodium hydroxide and peroxide. So that's the anti-Markovnikov. It's going to put the OH on the less substituted carbon. And then I'm going to do the Jones reagent or KMNO4 to make this carboxylic acid. So here's what I'm thinking on this. There is a missing intermediate, right? So this should actually be going to an OH that's anti-Markovnikov, and then this OH gets oxidized to a carboxylic acid. 
So for this first step, we usually write number one. First step is going to be the anti-Markovnikov addition of uh, water. And that part alone requires two steps. And yes, you do eventually need to know these enough to write them out. If I'm nice, I'll provide a list of reagents that you can use. Then from here, I'm going to oxidize it. So that's where the Jones reagent or KMNO4 comes in. All right, and you know, there's a lot of places where you have options like that. You know, Jones or uh, KMNO4 could work, so you could put KMNO4 instead. Can you put PCC here? And the answer is no. PCC, what will that do here? It will only make it into an aldehyde. So you do need to know when to use what. Okay, let's try a couple more here. We have this one. All right, so clearly there's stuff going on right here and it's changing into this. So now I'm going to backtrack a little bit. This looks pretty oxidized, so maybe there was an oxidation here. So maybe this could have been an OH group that got oxidized to a ketone. So I'm sort of thinking already that maybe this OH got added to here, and then maybe this was an OH that got added to there, because I know that I, there's a way to dihydroxylate. There is a reaction that we learned that puts two OH groups on here. Now, does it matter if it's cis or trans? Well, we only keep the stereochemistry here, and here it's disappeared. So it doesn't matter which method you use to get the two hydroxyl groups. You can either get the trans by doing MCPBA followed by uh, acid workup to open it up. So that's one way to get the dihydroxyl groups. And of course, the other way is to do OSO4 or KMNO4, and then followed by their respective workup steps. Now, the second part of this is to take this and do the oxidation. Now, notice, why do we oxidize one and not the other? Well, this part is tertiary, so those have no reaction because it's saturated, right? You don't want Texas carbon there. Here, you've got the uh, carbonyl group, so that's great. So it will just oxidize the secondary to a ketone, and the tertiary alcohol remains there from no reaction at that carbon. So what reagent do you need to oxidize an OH to a C double bond O? Now here, this is a secondary alcohol, so we can use any of the reagents, PCC or Jones or KMNO4. Because there's no distinction between an aldehyde or a carboxylic acid, it's a ketone. So in both of these problems, you see that I'm identifying the missing link. It's easier for me to sort of see what it needs to go through before I have to start writing these guys down. So I do one thing at a time with my little brain. I think about what does the molecule structure have to be to go from here to here. And then once I think of that intermediate, now it's easy to sort of easier to figure out, you know, okay, so I don't know this reaction has to be these two and this thing needs that. So it becomes easier. So why don't you guys get in the habit of writing out the intermediates? You know, can you sort of feel what the structures need to be and how they link together to get from beginning to end? I also want to point you to the method of using the map and identifying the functional group, alkyne, and then ketone, and halogen, okay? So how do I use that information? Well, look on your map, look for the alkynes, and look for the pathways that lead to ketones, or look for the pathways that lead to halogen, and find out if any of those might work. So for example, here are my alkynes, and I know I need to get to alkenes. Or I could go to alkanes, but that's a dead end. So I, I would say you rarely want to go to alkanes ever, okay? So we go to alkenes, and from there we have all these options, right? Well, I want to get to one that eventually produces a ketone or aldehyde or carboxylic acid, but it's got to also have a halogen on there, and those are over here. So how do I get to here, and how do I get to here at the same time? Well, it turns out I forgot one pathway, which was OH here can be oxidized. So maybe we should add that on as well. This OH 
can get oxidized using the same kind of reagents we have up here. So Jones or PCC or any of those reagents can work. And it gives me the halogen next door. So this is, this is what we want. We want to go alkyne to alkene, alkene to halohydrin, halohydrin oxidized to ketone. And that's using PCC, Jones, or KMNO4. So let's think of what that intermediate looks like. Now when I number these carbons, that doesn't make sense. It's got to be carbon 1 over here, right? So they did another flip on us, so make sure you recognize that. Uh, so here's carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, and at carbon 1, I have the Br. Carbon 2 is going to have an OH, 3, and 4, and then it can turn into this. So basically, um, I need something to go here, and we have two options. We can use either H2 Lindler's catalyst, or we can use sodium in liquid ammonia. Uh, for the second step, going from here to here, that's my hydrohalogenation reaction, Br2 in water. Once I get my halohydrin, I just need to oxidize the OH group. So highlighting the functional group changes. Okay, so I just need to highlight here and here. So that's my oxidation. And to do that, I can use any of the reagents, Cayman 4 PCC, or Jones. Okay, so I urge you for all of these reactions to think of the chain, the sequence of events. Think of the chain of intermediates you need. And then just identify the reagents. And feel free to use your notes as much as you need at the beginning until you start to pick up on the patterns. And I promise you, if you practice this just for an hour even, you would have so much knowledge about this. Uh, it would become so much easier. So just spend a little bit of time um, you know, trying to figure this out and use the chart. And then once you unlock that, you're going you're gonna to be able to remember.